Please welcome. We need we need some horses as well that are gonna. <laughs> Here comes the mayor on his horse. <laughs> Takes a while to get you. Hey? No, no, it's a it's a donkey actually. <laughs> Or we could afford. Yes. <laughs> good morning, Mr. Mayor. Good Mr. morning. Good morning, guys. So nice to be back with you. And uh, you join us on an illustrious day for your city uh, because I see Cape Town by Condé Nast Travelers, yes, the most is, like prestigious. That is a big deal. Condé travel. Nast is a big deal. Yeah. Uh, it's French, eh? Is it uh, French? I, I believe it is, yes. Um, and uh, 2023, they've just had their awards and voted fourth best large city in the world. It is our home, Cape Town. Hey. Go Cape Town. Uh, we beat Sydney, Australia, mate. Of course yes. we did. That the, is never in question. They came fifth. Uh, Singapore. Incredible that they performed that well, actually. <laughs> <laughs> Very competitive you are. Oh, you, you, you had seen nothing. <laughs> Singapore came in at number one. Uh, Tokyo, number two. And Seoul, North Korea, at number three. Cape Town, mm. four. And uh, Sydney, five. What an accolade, Ooh. eh? So that's... Very cool. th we've been voted fourth there. We've also been voted fourth by a UK publication. Fourth best city in the world. Well, the, okay. the, the UK uh, Times of London and Guardian uh, had us at number one, actually, place to oh. visit, number one place to visit in the world. Uh, and in Times of London and Guardian are, are big, but Condé Nast is, is way bigger. It's, it's a seriously big deal. It's kind of the global travel body. Yes, uh, it is, yeah. Yeah, so well done, mm. Cape Town. Well done, Mr. Thank you. Mayor. Thank you. That's about as easy as it's going to be for you okay. this morning. Because <laughs> we've got some things to discuss. Right. <laughs> I'm ready. <laughs> so you're enjoying the school holidays? I am. I am. It's it's been uh, some some early mornings. Obviously, uh, this is my opportunity to get uh, some some slightly longer days in because I don't have to do the school drop off. Uh, so it's it's been a busy week, but but a good one so far. I'm enjoying it. Um, are you like um, everybody else at night? I was, I'd, I'd imagine you have a lot to do. Um, I see you at all hours uh, doing yes. things. Ten o'clock at night. Um, uh, when you get into bed, are you also on TikTok? No, no, definitely not. <laughs> definitely not. What do you mean, like watching funny videos? Yeah. yeah, just watching random stuff, getting lost. Yeah, if 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 I get home at a reasonable hour, then I might do that with my daughter because uh, she likes to watch some of those funny ones and our, our algorithm is now programmed to give us all the kind of... The kiddie ones. The, yeah, the funniest uh, kiddie, right. kiddie friendly ones. Uh, but that's, uh, that's only if I get home at a reasonable hour, I'm afraid, which is... Not all that often these yeah. days. Yeah, and and Wafi, she's good. She's great. Yeah. Okay. Is is, is she? What is she doing? Does she got a day job? Yeah. Or? She she works. Fortunately, she's very uh, privileged, uh, blessed to to work from remotely. She works okay. at home on on basically on computer, and uh, she works for a, a small corporate consultancy that's based mainly in Joburg. So is she the only person in Cape Town? I think there might be one other person in Cape Town. And uh, and so she gets to gets to do that, which is pretty cool. Okay. Um, taxi struck. Uh, yes. Where are we with that? That's the the biggest thing that's happened <laughs> yes. in the past uh, yeah. three Since months. Last, yes. City yeah. came to a standstill. You yeah. you stood your ground. I did. I think I thought that was really important to do, not just for Cape Town but for the country actually. Uh, and I think it, it, it delivered the right outcome. We got back to the negotiating table, uh, but we did so in a way that made it clear that we're never going to accept violence and intimidation as a form of negotiation tactic uh, in Cape Town, because that's never going to send the right message or incentive to, uh, to anyone, uh, yeah. never mind the taxi industry. So, you know, dealing with... Uh, construction mafia dealing with certain rogues and I'm, it's important that I say it's not everyone in the taxi industry that I've had so many great taxi drivers be in touch with me about uh, you know their working conditions and the things that I said about about how their lives need to improve as well uh, but there are some rogues and it was important to to set that line for those 
for those elements. Has there been any uh, feedback on the economic impact of that strike on the city and, and the province? Or is that something you can't really quantify at this stage? The provincial government, uh, Alan's office, put out a figure of 5 billion rand, Mm -hmm. uh, significant impact. Uh, I think that was, you know, it was quite quickly put together. So Mm -hmm. I can't speak as to the accuracy of that number, but it's probably uh, somewhere in the uh, billions. Somewhere in the billions, Mm -hmm. yeah. Mm -hmm. It's been a busy, busy term, (coughs) uh, Mayor. Excuse me. It also feels like time is moving so quickly. It's incredible. I mean, uh, next next month, on the 18th of next month, is two years uh, in office already. Mm. It has flown by. Mm. And do you do fire before? Five. Five. Yeah. Five. And you've aged how many years in yeah. that period? <laughs> <laughs> you're, like, you're a spring chicken two years ago. <laughs> it's like doing, it's like doing um, kind of uh, time travel through space. You know, you're, you're only traveling for two years, but you age 20 or something. Yeah. yeah. Um, so... Uh, but it's, it, it actually still has been absolutely incredible. Uh-huh. I, and I think the reason it feels like a, a much shorter period is because it's it's been so fulfilling and, and very fun. Mm-hmm. And looking back at the last term, Mayor, what would you say has been your highlight and then also the biggest challenge? Of, since we spoke last? Yeah. Mm. The biggest challenge, undoubtedly, the, the, the taxi strike. Mm. Uh, I mean, the... That's not something that you expect. We got a notice, uh, you will remember it very well, on Thursday afternoon to say, no notice, no forewarning, we're going on strike right now, uh, Mm. immediately, leaving tens of thousands of people uh, to walk home along the N2. That's Mm. that's an image I will never forget. Mm. Uh, Very, very upsetting. Uh, Then I think the highlight, without doubt, uh, you know, 263,000 new jobs in the city over the course of the last 12 months. 263,000. 263,000 new jobs Yeah. in Cape Town just over the last 12 months. It means that we've caught up all of what we lost in COVID and we're now well ahead of that again. Uh, we're back to, to uh, above 2019 pre-COVID levels. And you, if you look at that in, in context, 263,000, looking at the average family size of four people, that impacts a million people. Oh, it's incredible. It's people you know who have, have never actually had the chance to work before people who have matriculated but never been able to find a job or even people who have got post uh, matric education but have never been able to find work they're getting work for the first time including 56,000 in the last three months which is what you asked the the highlight here Uh, so Cape Town's economy and particularly our tourist economy linking back to what Darren said about Condé Nast uh, is absolutely pumping at the moment. And I think we're about to, when summer finally arrives, I'm looking out the window and it is overcast again. Uh, I feel like we're going to meet in the studio in like 2026 and we'll still be in the winter of 23. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, <laughs> no, quite easily. <laughs> it's been brutal. Uh, but the, I think we're going to have the best the best summer season that we've, we've ever had in our city. I wanted to ask you, I mean, uh, how many people does the city employ? Uh, it, the city, thirty-two thousand people. It's quite a it, it it's quite a lucrative job, I hear, just from what I gather on the ground. Because um, I had an electrician around the other day, and he said to me very proudly, "I used to work for the city, you know, as a credential for me to say yes, please, please touch, touch the wires, yeah, you know." And then I, there was, uh, and then I also with the electrician, you need, you need a plumber. And I was a friend of mine, and it just becomes a, a, a turn of phrase now. He said to me, yeah, you know what? Use this guy. This guy does work for the city. Yeah. Yeah, so it's, it's kind of like a badge of honor. It's highly revered, it's yes. It's highly yes. respected, yeah. And then I'm glad I, to hear that. And then I met another guy who was a welder, and he said to You me, had a lot going on at your house. I've always got a lot going yeah. on in my house. And, and he said, listen, um, this guy is doing really well now because he's retired he used to work at the city yeah and he got a great pension mm-hmm. it is a great great place to work and thank you for for saying that because i want more and more people to apply mm-hmm. we want the public sector the public service to be a cool attractive place to work and if you are dedicated to your profession dedicated to your trade please please come and work at the city and you know what we also have got uh, bursaries for people who want to study engineering, data science, uh, uh, you know, road construction, uh, all of the all of the things that the city does, 
if you are going to study one of those fields, there's a full list on our website. We'll actually pay for your studies mm, uh, if you come and work for us afterwards, obviously. Yes. So you got to pay it back. Yeah. So it's a it's an awesome place to work, and as you've now seen yourself, also r- respected out there in the market, which makes me very happy. No, it is it is absolutely. Uh, we got Bronwyn on from uh, Blue Dance. Good morning, Bron. Good morning, Darren. How are you? Fine, thanks. And you, Bronwyn, you're on with the mayor. Hi. Good morning, everybody. Darren Sherman, Mr. Mayor. Hello, Bron. Okay, what, what, what's, what's going on there, Bronwyn? So, my problem is, um, especially just to Mr. Mayor, I'm sitting with no electricity for the past 21 days due sure. to ESCOM. You must be in an ESCOM area. Yes, I am. Mm-hmm. <laughs> because that would never happen we, in a city area. Yes, uh, well, we where are you, Bronwyn? Are you in, are you in uh, Makassar? No, we're in Fountain Village. Oh my goodness! I know exactly what the um, I know exactly what the issue is. I've tried to, and maybe we must try and get Escom on the line right now. Maybe we can try and get uh, some service for you. We were yesterday to come and sort it out. We yeah. ended up going to Escom offices yesterday afternoon, and they oh, well didn't talk to us. They wouldn't let us in. Um, we had it's, Trish it's on shocking. the phone last night in a conference call. And they promised us today, but I mean, for 21 days with no power, mm-hmm. we've had people being robbed. We've had a gentleman pass away. We've had people. How are you actually? How are you? I mean, you, you've got no fridges, nothing. We've got nothing, sir. Nothing. Yeah, it's absolutely I mean, shocking. Mm. It is. It is. There was a baby hospitalized, a man killed, a lady mm. was sent to hospital in the week sure. as well. Now, let me tell you, uh, Bronwyn, I've. It's main to live like this. Uh, you, I've spoken, I think I've spoken on this show before about the efforts that we are making to get all of the ESCOM areas handed over to us so that we can service the whole city. Sure, that there needs is to not, happen. Yeah. There is not a single city serviced area that would ever experience such a long outage. I wouldn't be here. I'd be here as the ex-mayor if that ever happened. And it's just incredible to me that they can get away with that. I can tell you uh, if if any Mr. Okes or Mr. Yedwa or anyone from ESCOM management is listening, please phone in and, and tell us when you are going to deal with the Fountain Village and the other areas in the city that are, that are, are still, still out from the, from the floods, from the storm. Yeah. Uh, that that haven't yet been fixed. Well, let's find Escom customer call center. You know what's going to happen. You're going to get you're going to get hold of Alfie, the the chatbot. Bronwyn, have you tried to get hold of Alfie? Did you get an answer from him? We've we've got 114 houses of no power. So wow. Every single one of us. You don't even have phones. Mm. Yeah. Every single one has been chatting and emailing and mm. going mm. and doing what we can. So I I have been later. aware of your issue and have tried to. I called. I spoke to Escom two days ago and they promised me that they were going to be there. Uh, to put a new. You you need a new kiosk. I think it's called. Huh? A substation. A substation. Let me just pull up the message that I got back. Hmm. Um, sure. I mean, it, as you say, that I'm glad. I'm glad to inform you that uh, a mini substation will be delivered tomorrow, Tuesday, three October. So this was Monday that I spoke to them for Fountain yes, Village, they and us that yesterday, and we're still waiting. And it was never done. Well, there you go. Ah, it's wow. the rain. It's wow. the rain. It's that next <laughs> excuse. Listen, Bronwyn, I know it's uh, it's it's a punish. Oof. Um, Bronwyn, we are working on getting all those areas handed over. The, the, the talks are proceeding extremely slowly, extremely slowly. Uh, but I'm very grateful for the support. I've seen the petitions that you've done. I've seen uh, the letters. I've seen the marches that you did to ESCOM in Belleville. Uh, so I am very, I'm following uh, quite closely what's happening there. And I appreciate the support. Okay, Bronwyn. Thank Bron- you so much, sir. All right, Bronwyn. Is, is, is ESCOM on the line there? So it was just like a pre-recorded thing that yes. played that said that. Uh, not going to get anywhere. <laughs> All right. Um, There's no load shedding. Yeah. <laughs> hey. well, not for those residents. <laughs> yeah. Snapshot questions. Right. Uh, they will all be given due consideration. We will give the mayor all these questions. He can take back to his office later on today. Okay. Just uh, one from me in terms of property prices. All right. Now... If you've got a, a house that's fully paid off and you see the price skyrocketing, that's mm. great for you. Mm. If you are trying to get into the property market, it's harder. It's it's the it's the opposite. Um, I know a city like Lisbon and some other cities are following suit. Lisbon now and uh, for the most part Portugal have stopped giving Airbnb licenses because what it has done, it has driven the house prices up. Mm-hmm. Um, you can't even get long-term rentals 
the long-term rental price has skyrocketed because everybody wants to catch the short-term cash with Airbnb. Mm -hmm. And big story yesterday, there are more Airbnbs in Cape Town than Amsterdam, San Francisco and Singapore combined. Wow. And a lot of these Airbnbs are entire houses, right? It's not someone just renting out a room, Mm. which means that you take essentially that property off the market if someone maybe is looking to rent live closer yeah. to work all of these things so without destroying uh w- one economy mm-hmm. or one part of the economy where's the balance here mm-hmm. where's the affordable housing in the city for us that's local exactly. please mayor no, uh, <laughs> help us <laughs> that's that's why i stay in edge meat it's the best part of the I've city s- to stay i've said that many many times yeah. Yeah. Is, 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 is you know what I also used to stay out in the suburbs, mm. but everybody wants, you know, to, 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 to get close. the penthouse in the city. In Mully like, Point, yeah. Yeah, exactly. I mean, you've just started working, for goodness sake. Yeah. I lived in a garage, you know. Mm. But anyways, that's besides the point. Um, what's the, the, the balance here with pr- house prices? And is it Airbnb that's driving it up? Or is it just the city? We know it's a supply and demand issue where everybody's yeah. just moving here. So it's multifaceted. This, yeah, I was about to say, there's quite a few things driving it up at the moment. The I think the, the bigger thing actually is roughly a thousand uh, families from uh, Gauteng and KZN moving here every month. Yeah. Uh, so there are there's not enough supply of, of homes and apartments in the city to even keep up with that demand, never mind the number of tourists coming. There's not enough hotels in the city. In peak period, our peak is, is January, February. In peak period uh, this year, February uh, 23, we had a week or two weeks, I think, where there was not a single free hotel room in Cape Town. We had people, mm. international delegates for the mining in Darba staying in Gordon's Bay because yeah. there wasn't a single free hotel room anywhere in the city. Uh, so there's the the hotel construction is slow to catch up. There are three hotels under construction or about to start construction in the city right now. Three brand new ones uh, and that hopefully will, will, will help ease the pressure. And then uh, Sherlin is right. We've got to focus on that affordable accommodation in well-located parts of the city, which is why I've, I've spent so much time talking about uh, what we call social housing. People get a mistaken impression that that's kind of uh, like RDP houses or something. But what it actually is, is affordable rentals mm-hmm. in well-located parts of the city. We are trying to release uh, parcels of land that we own in the CBD, in Salt River, in Woodstock, in Maitland, all close to the CBD where you can do social housing developments. We've just finished one in Maitland called Maitland Muse. It's awesome. And there you pay a rental of between, uh, at the very lowest end, about eight, uh, 800 to 1,000 Rand, but that's that's for the most subsidized, to up to about 3,500 at the top end uh, for a really nice apartment very close to the city on a, on a My City bus route. Uh, you know, that's we need much, much more of that. We're trying to unlock the Salt River market to do the same. I think we'll start construction there uh, around the middle of next year. That'll be much bigger. So we're trying to do that kind of development to get give people the chance to get into the property market at the first rung uh, in in uh, you know, nicer parts of the city or, and, and located close to job opportunities and work opportunities. And then, of course, you've got to make sure that the market can properly respond to the pressure and get more units onto the market Mm. and a lot of what i do is try and talk with residents who are very very opposed to new developments in cape town and the densification of the city but the fact is that cape town is a very desirable place to live particularly uh, you, you know the 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 cbd and so on and there has to be new investment all the time you can't block that if you Mm. block that it means the prices are going to go up for everyone both as you say in the market and those trying to get in yeah which means that you end up what what i'm afraid of is a kind of san francisco result where where no one can afford to own property anywhere Mm -hmm. it's just uh, outrageously expensive we want to make sure that that doesn't happen um, some questions here, Mayor, uh, from our WhatsApp telephone. Here's one. Uh, my question for the Mayor is, um, are there any plans to build more dams um, so that we can save all of this amazing rain? Yes, we are, we are doing more of that ourselves. Uh, the, 
actually municipalities, cities in South Africa are not supposed to build dams. We buy we buy water from the Department of Water Affairs and we what's called reticulate that water. In other words, we just pipe it around the city. We, we, we first treat it to make it drinking water standard uh, and then we, we pipe it around the city. But actually what Cape Town is doing because of our experience in back in 2017 with Day Zero, we are paying for the expansion of the full flay dam uh, canal project we are drilling into aquifers around the city at, at atlantis and um, at table mountain aquifers and we are already in fact right now pumping water out of those aquifers and 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 using it next year we are starting one of the biggest water recycling uh, projects in the world so we are ourselves investing in uh, new sources of water for the city's future to protect our residents from ever having to go through day zero again. And that's part of what you will have heard me, I hope, speaking about local governments being prepared to do more to make up for the various examples of, of national government departments not doing what they're supposed to be doing. Okay, another one here. Can we please have the Turkish baths back, the municipal swimming I'm, pool? I'm, All's I'm, good, seven o'clock morning swims. And now we don't have access to our Turkish baths anymore and it's been a long time since before the threat of day zero. I'm Please sorry. ask the mayor to bring it back. Is this the bathhouse in the yes. city that I was... I'm literally, it's it's an amazing coincidence. Mm-hmm. Thank you for sending that voice note because I'm on my way there after this interview. I'm going straight there. For a dip. Uh, no, I don't think I'm going to have a dip today, but I'm going to check on the, I'm going to check on the upgrades uh, and repairs progress. Look, I must be honest with you, it's a tough case to make that the municipality should provide Turkish baths for people <laughs> to. <laughs> because in the old days, uh, I, I'm told, I never went there once, but I'm told that you could go there and get a massage and you could get some Turkish tea and coffee and... Some uh, delights. In, uh, I'm not sure. <laughs> Maybe that, okay, you can tell us about that later. Darren. I don't know. I've never been, <laughs> but I was invited multiple times. But um, <laughs> but the pool is the, the 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 heaters have been fixed, so the the pool is heated again, uh, and the bathrooms are being upgraded and and uh, the the lockers fixed. So it's a beautiful facility. It's a very historic facility mm. in our city, and it must be it must be in tip top shape to use for everyone. Okay, our final word here for the mayor. Uh, from somebody else. Good morning, Mr. Mayor. I just want to say that your heart is in the right place and I really appreciate your leadership, servant leadership, a man of integrity. Thank you so much for everything you've done in your term. Oh, that's incredibly yeah, yeah. kind. Thank you so much. Yeah, Thank yeah. Well you. done, man. Well done. Thank you very much. Good job. Uh, Mayor, uh, we will see you again. Don't tell me. No, we'll see you in December. Yes. In school I holidays. look forward to it. I look forward to it. Thank you so much. And when uh, will you be here in December still? Or will you be... No. Nah. We hope. Shirlin I will hope be gone. to see you again in December, sir. How, how far along are you, Shirley? Final trimester. Oh, well mm-hmm. done. Well, yeah. all the best. Thank all the best. Thank you so much, Mayor. And see you all soon. Thank you very much. And thank so, you, Cape Town. So she's overpopulating the city. Not <laughs> one, but two. And let and me just... Can so you see we need that affordable house <laughs> in, oh, yeah. in, the, in the city? Sorry, are there two coming? Yes. Two. Amazing. Two. Amazing. Yeah. Amazing. Yeah. Amazing. <laughs> well, that's the, that is probably the best way to do it. Get it all done. At, uh, yeah. Yeah. At once. <laughs> but le- let me just, before I uh, duck out, say we, we had a difficult time last week with the floods. And I really want to thank uh, KFM, this show, and all the other shows on, on the station for helping out with the flood relief in the city and elsewhere as well. I heard about what was going on in Filiersdorp and all the good work that you did. So thank you very, very much for doing that. It's our pleasure. That's why we're here. So let's just make sure that our transmitters are working all the time. Yes. That's your next task, Mayor, Jeez. is that we're always off in George and we're always the off people here. people are upset with us. We got, they can't get to us. We've got 26 transmitters. We're at the behest of Centec, which is another government parastatal that's failing. Mm-hmm. And we need somebody to get involved. And so is that called radio shedding? Mm-hmm. That, oh. Exactly right. Exactly oh. right. <laughs> And a nice, cutesy little word won't make it any more palatable. <laughs> All right, Maya, please. Cheers, guys. Bye-bye. Cheers.